me, Desmond is amazing, and today is a new episode of Chats with my mom. Uh, today we're going to be talking about costuming and how she was inspired to do a lot of costumes. Um, and we'll be showing pictures of me and her in costumes. And yeah, so I'll go first and ask her questions and she'll ask me questions. So yeah, let's get into it. So, number one, what does costuming mean to you? To me, costuming is um, creating a character, um, something different than who you are in everyday life. But I also think that there's a difference between costuming and like having an outfit, because I think having an outfit is still like a part of yourself. So for instance, when I go to like a theme event, um, I'm going as a character that relates to that event but when I go to like um, a veterans memorial and I'm doing like a reenactment, that's an outfit because that's a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, number two. When did you start making costumes? I started making costumes in middle school. Um, I took home ec class, which at the- I already know what that is. You do? Yeah, yeah. They, well, for the people who might not know, home economics class was where they taught you to sew clean and cook. Um, I think it was geared more for the female students. I don't think they teach it anymore. Um, I think they found that it was possibly sexist. Maybe a little sexist, maybe. Um, in a way, I wish they would teach it to all students, like because I think it's important to know how to do basic things like cleaning, sewing, cooking. Um, but yes, to cut to the point, I learned how to sew in home economics and I would um, go buy fabric and, and try and sew things. Um, so I really started back then, but I think the main part of when I really started seriously, seriously costuming was when I moved to New York City. So in the early 2000s. Okay, then let's see some pictures of your costumes. Yeah, let's see some pictures. <laughs> inspired me to do costuming was an uncle of mine, um, Uncle Roger. And what is this in case I get emotional? Yeah. Um, uncle Roger, he did a lot of um, costuming for his local community theater. He, When we would visit him, you would see these amazing costumes on dress forms that he was working on. Um, but unfortunately, I lost him in the early 90s to the AIDS epidemic. And um, that, that was one of the most um, painful experiences of my entire life. And I didn't even use a tissue. <laughs> See? All right, number four. Did you go to school to learn to costume? 
Um, yes and no. I didn't go to like an art school. I didn't go to a fashion institute or to college to learn how to costume. I just kind mm -hmm. of either MacGyvered it or I, I did attend it's court. Like, it's what like, a MacGyver is? Yeah. So MacGyver was a series that was on television and this guy could make like um, like a bomb out of a paper clip and a, like a toothpick. Um, he would just take the most outrageous things and put them together to make stuff and solve crimes um, and go after the bad guys. So I would like MacGyver stuff, not bombs obviously, but costumes. Mm -hmm. And or, or I did take courses at the New York School of Burlesque. I highly recommend them. They're amazing. I took hair courses, makeup courses, costuming courses. Um, I never wanted to be a burlesque performer. That's just not who I am. But I figured if someone is taking their costume off um, every night and throwing it like on the stage and then using it again another night and over and over and over again, there must be some durability in the way that they're making costumes. So that's why I wanted to go there particularly to learn costuming. Okay, number five. Mm -hmm. Do you think costuming is hard? Ooh, um, oh, I almost gagged, yes. <laughs> Here, here's some water. <laughs> I do. Mm. I find that you have to have a certain level of motivation, passion, drive in order to um, make your vision into a reality. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, one year I wanted to be Zardoz, like Sean Connery and Zardoz. Zardoz, Zardoz. I really wanted to be Zardoz, and I and I had gotten like a naked, I guess not naked. What am I saying? I I gotten like a nude colored cat suit, and I was gonna put hair on it because Sean Connery he has like a hairy chest, and oh. it didn't work out. And I was in tears, and I skipped the event I was going to. And my friends will tell you I've done this before many a time where I just freak out because things don't work out. Um. So yes, it's, it can be very hard, but I think if you just keep a positive attitude, anything's possible, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so six. What is the process you go through when deciding what your costume will look like? Um, <clears throat> I like to create like a mood board. So I'll go on Google and I'll search up images that are related to whatever it is I'm making. Um, and I use that as inspiration. And then I like to put on music and kind of tune, kind of, I, I don't know, like do a meditation. Vibe. Yeah, like a vibe. Well, I, mm -hmm. I use the music to kind of meditate and get in the groove of making my costume. In the essence. That's right. And so I really like the Velvet Underground for um, doing costume for some reason. It's very relaxing. All right, number seven. Mm -hmm. Favorite fabric you like to use. My favorite fabric I like to use is anything, anything that hot glue sticks to. <laughs> oh God. If it hot glue sticks to it and it works, that's my favorite fabric. Truth. Hey, if you could have one type of costume, <clears throat> what would it be? I've always wanted to be the sorceress from He-Man. Um, but I don't, I don't think I would, I don't think, I mean, I'm overweight, obviously, and I don't think you that I would make a very good sorceress. I don't you think not. I am, and, no, and I'm not. just, I think it would be very lumpy and, and just, and, and, you know, now I have just dated myself on how old I am, because, oh, I watched it when I was a kid, he, man, I loved it. Mom, always be body positive about yourself. You know, I'm glad your generation is very body positive because I don't know if my generation is very body positive. <laughs> okay. Number nine. Where do you draw inspiration from to do your costumes? Where do I draw inspiration from? I guess music, um, whatever the theme is or the reason for making the costume, um, what the character is, um, I think another motivation is, or another inspiration is just getting to that final product and seeing that you took like scraps and made it into something fabulous. So I guess that's 
what inspires me. Okay, number 10. Are you ever too old to wear costumes? Wait, are you calling me old? No. Where is this nonsense coming from? I feel old. I'm almost 50 years old. I'm old. Jesus Christ. Well, no, I don't think that you're ever too old to have fun and dress up. I mean, kids do it. Why can't adults do it? I think the idea that, oh, I'm too old and it would be foolish or immature if I did something like that. I think that's just mm -hmm. dumb because like life is short. Have fun. If you want to like, like I do now, like if you want to rock hair that's crazy, do that. If you want to wear whatever, do that. We're in pajamas. It's the pandemic. We're rocking out. So no, you're never too old to have fun. I mean, YOLO. If you are, you're miserable. So I mean, not no, if you aren't having fun, you're miserable. Sad. Yeah, very sad. 11. Advice to people who want to costume. Mm. My best advice would be just to do it. Don't get in your head too much. Um, just give it a go, keep going. And even if you hit a road bump, uh, a speed bump, a speed bump that, then just keep going, just yeah. keep going. And um, something, you'll come up with something. And also, um, can you explain how you get out of your head when you're in your head? Um, Well, to get out of my head, I like to listen to binaural beats. I like That's to meditate. Um, I like to listen to music, uh, breathing, like taking deep breaths and like regrounding yourself. And also caffeine helps. It's not good for you, but oh, you know. What does the future hold for you and your costuming? And that is the last question. Well, <laughs> We're in the pandemic, so there's not much going on for costuming for me in the future and not for you in the future either because there's just not a lot going on. So the future yeah. right now with the pandemic is very uncertain and there's just, there's no future. Okay, well, I'm ready for my questions. I'm ready, ready for my, you ready for your questions? I'm ready for my questions. I'm now, ready for my close-up. I'm sorry. Questions. Uh, do you know what movie that comes from? Uh, since it's over. Good job. I caught him well. She has. Um, number one, what does costuming mean to you? Well, costuming mean, means dressing up as someone that you like or that you would like to be, or mm -hmm. I guess dressing up in a way that you like um, and feeling happy about yourself, not feeling insecure about how you look, how you feel, like my mom said. Um, she's insecure about how she's overweight and I told her, you know, it's fine. Um, be body positive. Um, and I think costumes are just a way for people to feel confident and feel accepted with themselves. Mm -hmm. You've always been like, you go out in the wackiest things and You've never been one to be like, oh my God, someone stared at me. I can't do this. You're always like, whatever. I'd be like, <laughs> okay, number two. My questions are really long. I wrote like a story. I wrote a novel. How many? There's 12. But we already went through one. We only have 11 more. Um, as a mom, this is number two. As a mom, I saw like firsthand how you would experiment with playing dress up. Um, well, let's show some photos of Desmond early on playing dress up.
question is, when you were that young, when you were like four or five, and you were creating all these crazy outfits and like grabbing stuff around the house to make outfits, what inspired you to keep making new outfits and new looks? Like, why did you keep always going back to playing dress up instead of like moving on to other, like, I guess, toys or games? You always kind of went back to dress up. Well, it's just like a repeating cycle. You can't get like thrown out of it. Um, just like, um, I don't know how to compare that to, but um, uh, it's just you know, something that you always come back to. You can never leave it. Mm -hmm. Like, you can never leave your body. Do you mean like if it's something that you love a lot, you yeah. always go back to it? Yeah. Like, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Um, and it's just always been like, um, very fun to be able to, like I said in, um, everything I said in the first question, insert there. <laughs> um, um, it's always just been fun to be able to feel good about what I look like or just feel happy. Um, well, I'm always happy, but, um, you are, You're, you've always been like a really happy kid, but like feel like so beautiful or like kooky or crazy or cool, you know, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. Number three, um, you used to do, well, you still do, but you used to do a lot of like designing of looks in your fashion design books. Um, you had a, a ton of them. You you use those like coloring books. Like you like those better than your coloring books. Yeah. Um. So well, I'm gonna sh let's just show some photos of what your designs look like. related to your designs is why did you want to draw costumes and fashion and then my second question that kind of goes along with the first question is where did these design ideas come from well I like when I was bored I just like to you know doodle um and yeah I just made wacky stuff um, I just on the photos um and it's just so fun to like be able to like make fashion and like look at it and be like that would be good in real life. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You just hit me. Sorry, it was supposed to fly over there. Did I give you a paper cut? No, no. I'm just, oh, okay. <laughs> Because maybe people don't know a lot about you and they may not know about your costumes mm -hmm. or maybe they just started following you and then they haven't seen like your progression in your costume. So let's just take a minute and we're going to look at some of Desmond's costumes. Cool the mother, the 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 c
is your creative process like from start to finish? Like when you're thinking of a costume or you're making a costume, what is your creative process? My creative process would definitely have to be just staying, you know, like I like to say, still chill. Um, yeah, you say it all the time. Still chill. Um, I just say, you know, chill. I go along with the wave, and even if I get a rogue wave, I <laughs> I don't I don't go um I don't capsize. I I like these. I like these examples. Metaphors. Metaphors. You're right. Grammar nerd. You are so smart. No, I'm not. Please. You're an A student. Number five. No, I wasn't finished. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were. No, um, I'm sorry. I don't capsize. I just go like, like um, like a ship that gets a row wave. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't I don't capsize. I don't sink. I just keep going with the problem, and I let all the water out of me, and just return back to port safely and complete. That makes sense. That was weird. Yeah. That was a quite the metaphor. I, I liked it though, because I like nautical stuff. All right. Um, number five. Do you feel like you have a different persona when you are in costume? No. I don't think I have a different persona when I'm in a costume because I'm like, I'm always like chill and upbeat and happy most of the time, unless I'm like something sad happened. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly I'm just upbeat, chill, and happy, and vibing. Yeah, I, I've noticed that because, like, I think a lot of people, or maybe not a lot of people, I, I don't really know, but I think some drag artists, when they put on a costume, they have a completely different persona or a completely, like, a whole character that they yeah, do. That's just how, like, I talk. Uh -huh. I mean, but for you, I've never seen you really... Like I do don't like that, right? You don't change your voice. You yeah, don't. I'm not like, oh, like, hey everyone, it's me. And I'm all like, yeah. You don't like chill. become like a totally different person. You are still you. The only thing though is you like to impersonate celebrities a lot, and and you kind of like, um, how do I say it? Like you use their personality, but only for your performance. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, number six. Number six. In addition to your costumes, you also have some really creative accessories and hats. So here's some examples. Let's see those. are to an outfit or a costume well in my opinion it depends because you don't want to overdo the outfit if there's so much happening mm -hmm. um, but if the outfits a little bland add a few accessories and you got it so you're saying if you have too much on that's too busy yeah okay um, number seven do you have a dream costume or a favorite character that wears a costume that you would like to make? Um, no. I would just try and make that costume. <laughs> uh, just go for it. Um, but I really wish I could have amazing, like, really big Marie Antoinette skirt. Ooh, Marie Antoinette. She had beautiful dresses. Yes. Would you wear, like, the pannier? Yeah. How wide would you want them? As wide as possible. <laughs> You'd have to go through, I think you'd have to go through doorways like sideways then. Yeah. It would be fun. See, that time I didn't hit you. Um, number eight. I feel like makeup is more important when it comes to your costumes than like, for instance, mine. Um, so he, here's some photos of, of makeup that you've done.
thoughts on creating the perfect makeup to go with your costumes? Well, there is no, no one can be ever perfect, mm -hmm. in my opinion, even if you get like the eyeliner exactly straight, mm -hmm. that's not perfect. Um, because I don't believe in perfection, I believe in everyone has to, uh, you know, like train up to getting to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and makeup is always great with an outfit, even if it's just like a little bit of like eyebrows, mascara, as I can, as you can see it. I don't know if you can see that I have mascara on. Um, just, you know, brighten up my eyes. And I think makeup always helps um, make the look feel complete or gives the look an extra, like, you know, like, explosion. Or... Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like, like just that oomph. Yeah, that extra oomph. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. <laughs> Um, paper lashes! time they know about the paper lashes and this was something that you used to do um, you would take construction paper and you would basically cut out this like mountain shape but skinny mountains like I guess like almost an eyelash shape but I don't know they were really unique and then you would glue those to your eyes and you even just like slap them on and they would stick straight up yeah um, where did this idea come from to do these were they hard to wear and could you actually see when wearing them? Okay, so the idea came from my mind. I was just thinking, looking on the internet, like, um, like I was looking at like YouTube tutorials on how to put lashes on it. I saw this person, I can't remember, it was like years ago, but they're like, I tried paper lashes for the first time and dot, dot, dot. So I watched it and I, they showed how they made it. Um, and that's where the idea came from. Mm -hmm. And were they hard to wear? Yes and no. Um, they were comfortable a little, but not really. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes when you place them in the wrong area, it felt like someone was stabbing your eye. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and it wasn't really hard to see. Um, it just felt like they were like this. I mean, even when you had the big ones, you could see. Because uh, you'd like blink, and then they'd be like, Bloop. well, that, when I'm blinking, my eyes is shut. Oh, I guess you have a point, but you know what you reminded me of in the what? construction paper? When you would close your eyes, you look like um, Janice from The Muppet Show. Do you know who that is? She she was like the rock band with um, Animal. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you ready for number 10? Let's go. So you've actually designed a lot of stuff. Um, people might not know how much you've designed, um, so let's look at some of the things that you've designed. Would you like to design things? Yes and no. Um, yes, because I want to become a fashion like designer with my mom. Collaboration. Um, oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Um, and 
And no, I would not like to like make like accessories like jewelry because I think I'm better with making outfits than jewelry mm -hmm. or sort of like sketching, as I said earlier. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. So I think it would have both cons and pros, mm -hmm. or pros or cons, however you want to say it. Um. And yeah. I love that you want to collaborate with me. Of course. I mean, not. we have collaborated. Oh. We've collaborated so much already on outfits. Yeah, so it's like a dream team. Yeah, the dream team. That's what you used to call us all the time. Um, oh God. Number 11, you have a drag alter ego named Rita Rich Chin. Oh God. So, so let's see this alter ego. Let's just take a moment. Let's take a video. Let's see, let's see a video. Yes. y'all it's Rita Rich and how you doing so how do you decide Rita's costumes because she's pretty fashionable well you see the thing is <laughs> when I pick my outfits I make sure I look good I make sure my eyebrows are on plate <laughs> and I make sure my lips look like they're upside down um, because who doesn't love a little bit of an upside down southern lip? Why is your alter ego southern? Because she comes from the Carolinas. That, well, that sounds like such a bad Because she comes from the Carolinas. But why am I? I is it because that's the exact opposite of being like northern? Northern from New York. I'm um, the BK. From the Northeastern Corridor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Rita comes from the Carolinas. She's from the North. No, the South. No, she's from the oh, North. Oh, the North Carolinas? Yes. Yeah, she's uh -uh. from the North Carolina. <laughs> um, Rita is very fashionable. Well, I pick her outfits. I uh, I just throw like a paper towel down and like then make like, you know, hot glue a piece of fabric to the paper towel and then Put the paper towel on my face so I can't see anything. Um, and then I take the paper towel to my head and then it looks complete. <laughs> so Rita has a very interesting type of fashion. But let's not judge Rita right now because Rita is fierce. <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. Yes, Rita is very fierce. And here's my last question. Our last okay. question. Okay, Rita, Rita likes it. Do you have advice for kids out there who might want to try costuming after seeing this video? Well, like my mom answered earlier, go for it because you only live once. YOLO! Bruh. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> um, you only live once and life is short. You never... I could die like... Well, don't say that. I could die any time and that's, that's like... That's horrible. That's the truth. Well, I know, and but I, I don't want to think about it. Well, actually science says that if you accept death that it can happen any day you'll be more content um but let's not get into that um i think it's just important to live your life to its best and always go for it and like i said don't let the rogue waves capsize you <laughs> um because you don't want to capsize and then you'll sink and then you'll be sad um so yeah, just go for it and be yourself and um, find some inspiration and watch tutorials on YouTube and don't copy others um, because copying is not inspiration. Uh, I see a lot of sometimes people like, oh, it's inspired, but it's like the exact opposite, opposite of inspired, it's copy. Um, but yeah, just go for it and love yourself and love what you do. <laughs> And yeah, go to Michael's. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all that's all the questions that I had for you. So I think we're at the end of our of our video. Okay, well, subscribe, hit the notifications and like the video, and comment down below what you want to see for the next chats with my mom. And I hope you all have an amazing day. Wear a mask, be yourself, and love yourself. Bye!